What's something that's secretly been great about the pandemic? Save money on gas. Not to mention wasting time just sitting in a traffic jam to get to a desk that I also happen to have in the office at home. This. I don't miss the commute at all. Got back at least an hour a day because of this. Not dealing with a commute. I got 6 to 8 hours a week back in commuting time. That's, like, about a whole extra work day every week that's mine to do with as I please. It's been incredible. And I hadn't realized how stressed my commute makes me. I don't have to be careful not to forget anything before I leave for work, or when I'm leaving the office at the end of the day, I don't have to pack lunch, I don't have to make sure I'm dressed for the weather both now and in 8 hours when I'm coming home. I don't have to get wet when I get that wrong, and I don't have to spend a day at work with my shoes and socks wet, or all of me wet. I don't have to wait at a bus stop for 40 minutes waiting for a bus that should have been here 30 minutes ago. No commute equals well no commute. No commute people. No delayed trains. No weather, less health issues, even just less colds, from constant changing temps, time. Morning, 2 hours extra sleep and not having to get ready. Day, generally chores, laundry, cleaning, dishes get done on work down time. So this freeze time on the weekends afternoon, 1.5 hours of me time. Money. Commuting total costs for my household, just for work, was around $500 a month. The added cost of heating, cooling, electricity, etc. from being home is nowhere near that. Food, I can cook all my own food. Don't need to replace going to work stuff. Clothes, shoes, beauty products, etc., health. I can work out more regularly, get sleep, and eat better. Also getting stuck at work by 5 minutes, no longer means getting a train 30 minutes later, it actually means 5 minutes. Also, getting good at writing well-formatted long posts. I like it, smiley face. A lot of restaurants have really upped their online ordering and drive through game like a well-oiled machine. And some shockingly haven't. I got takeout from one of my favorite restaurants the other day, and it took so long to order on the phone, that next time I'm just going to go down there and place an order in person. I had to speak to three different people to accomplish it, being put on hold each time, and give my credit card over the phone. And before you ask, yes, they advertise takeout on their website and menu, so it isn't as if it's a service they don't normally provide. The place I work is one of the places that hasn't for sure. We used to have people up front with dedicated positions, taking orders, bagging to go, etc. But corporate panicked and are forcing managers to schedule less people, then add to that doing way more curbside and phone orders there are just too many things to do and not enough people. During lunch there's a line of people. Phone rings now you have to stop taking orders from them. Order comes up you have to bag it, phone rings during bagging you have to answer it, Oh it's someone curbside so now you have to finish bagging the order you're already doing, find and take out the curbside order, then finally come back in to help the understandably unhappy guy that walked up to your register 4 minutes ago. Somehow saving a couple hours of labor is worth loads of unhappy customers and overworked employees though. Playing board games with my teenage kids. We got away from it as they got older. I still kick ass on Scrabble, but they smoke me on backgammon. Ticket to Ride is a blast. Yahtzee too. Edit, well this certainly resonated with the community. To answer a few questions, we don't play every night. A couple of times a week is where we're at now. We have more modern games, but backgammon and Yahtzee especially Yahtzee is the one they like to play the most. Monopoly, when played without house rules is fun. It probably won't last when things go back to normal, so I'm loving it while it lasts. Thanks for the awards. I have two teens, and a spouse. We really enjoy spoons and bullcrap. Easy, fast-paced card games. We also play blackjack as a family. We have a whole set of cards and chips. We keep a running tally of our chips on paper. My husband gets so mad because our daughter plays her gut and he plays by the rules and she is like a fake billionaire now and he's always panhandling for fake money to get him back in the game. It's a riot. Our son is always the dealer. Our casino is named after him and it's a good exercise in social skills and self-control. My kids are younger, 8 and 5, but we have been playing a ton of checkers, 
Beginner's Chess, Uno, a few other little kid games but the clear champ of the pandemic has been aggravation. We were introduced to it over the summer and have played it so many times. It's great because young kids can easily play, but you can also play it over drinks, in my case with my wife, her sister and sister's husband, they're in our pod. It's got just enough strategy to keep it interesting, and you can play while pretty drunk, believe me on that. But it's also easy to grasp for young kids and teaches them some basic strategy and counting. I've been recommending it to our all our friends. Cleaner beaches and ocean in Hawaii as millions of tourists stayed home. Of course the economy went to crap, but the Aloha Zena prospered. And way less traffic on the morning commute on the H1. I now permanently work from home, which is amazing. Me prior to 2020 man getting a job working from home would be amazing, but I don't even know where to start me getting moved to permanently work from home due to COVID oh okay well that works I guess. Pretty much any pre-2020 job listing that said work from home was guaranteed to be a scam. Now here we are, leaving the dream, in our sweatpants listening to music all day in our basements. My employer is still kicking the can down the road of whether we'll have to come back to the office when it's over. I've been working from home for a solid year. I'm not going back to an office. Any business that doesn't continue to embrace the new reality is going to have trouble. If asked propose it from a money-saving standpoint. Office has to provide space for X number of people and costs Y dollars. Current office has to provide space for zero number of people and costs zero dollars. How much does that add to the profit of the business not having to have office space, internet, electricity, etc. Why as a company are you choosing to negatively impact the bottom line to get the same amount of work done? This limits the funds for raises and so many other things the company could do to benefit morale which would further boost production. It is also saving employees money so in a roundabout way they gave everyone a raise by having them work from home only to take it away for some outdated construct of real life office space. I have a few points, your company is still responsible for you, notably for safety during the job. They will have to prove their efforts one way or the other in some time, so it's not that it is all for free now. I also feel the company should give you the required means to do your job. One of my colleagues doesn't have a desk at home. My supervisor didn't know what to do. For me, I would have bought the desk, or asked for it like months ago. We have desks in the office, IKEA stuff, so can be disassembled. If I were my boss I would let that colleague pick up one of those for the time being. A client of mine lets their employees take home equipment like screens or chairs, if requested with a valid reason, that felt like a good and simple solution to me. I think offices will be smaller in the future and have a higher amount of meeting space than now, compared to cubicle space so to say, but we must not forget there are people that cannot work from home, due to technological limits, like living outside the internet grid, or for personal issues. I haven't had a cold all year. Yeah this past year has probably been the healthiest I've ever been. Haven't ever had anything more than a minor headache, and that's usually just due to dehydration or something mundane. I started quarantine by becoming lactose intolerant for 6 months. You lucky bastard. I've developed a nice solid set of GERD and lactose intolerance, so being able to stay near a toilet has been the best part for me. I. Gear crew into house. I've had it all my life but realized during the pandemic that apparently not everyone constantly burps and almost throws up after eating, and the random coughing I do at times during the night isn't normal. I'm missing a tooth fairly close to the front of my mouth and I don't feel self-conscious smiling in public when I'm wearing a mask. It's a silly thing, but I kind of missed real smiles. Thanks for the awards, guys. My most liked slash commented comment is about my effed up teeth. That's something. Lol. I read missing a tooth very same. Me tooth. Same, I need dental work done so being able to wear a mask in public is really a blessing. I feel you. Almost all of my teeth are trashed from my various illnesses. I can't afford to fix my teeth and a mask makes me feel so much better. Without a social life, I've been forced to focus on myself instead of other people so I've cut down on my drinking, lost 35 pounds, and started seeing a therapist. 
Here's hoping I come out of this in better physical and mental shape than I went in. Me too. I lost 17 pounds and I just was discharged from therapy because my depression is officially, clinically at a zero. Go us. Edit, holy crap. Thanks for the awards, friends. To answer some questions, weight loss, I initially did a wellness challenge called 75 hard, a 75 day challenge that requires two workouts per day and sticking to a diet of your choice, among several other daily tasks. That kicked my butt into gear and got me into the habit of regularly exercising and eating well, so I've lost a few more pounds since I completed it in September. This also helped my mental health a lot, but not completely. Mental health, I did acceptance and commitment therapy, which is a form of CBT that focuses on accepting your feelings and mindfully working through them, rather than avoiding them. My therapist had me fill out a questionnaire every time we met and based on my answers, he was able to calculate numbers on a depression scale. I can't go into more detail about that, because I don't know, but I started at a 42 one hundredths and last week was at a 3 on 1 scale. And on another I started out at a 7 tenths and last week was at a 0. So I'm clinically not depressed I guess. Plus, the last several weeks I've come to him feeling great and having little to talk about, which meant it was time for me to be discharged. Why was I discharged? My therapist works out of a medical facility, rather than private practice, so they go based on a medical model. It's more of a let's give our patients the tools they need to cope and once they no longer need us, we'll let them go, so they can make room for more patients with acute needs, rather than a we'll see patients as long as they pay us. I could have been referred to someone like that, but, like I said, I didn't have much to talk about by the end. What specifically helped me? Mindfulness exercises and writing down five good things about myself each day. My negative self-talk was the biggest factor in my depression. I don't do that anymore. I am a badass. What the effing hell is clinically at zero? Who did you see and how did they do it? I feel cheated. My entire experience with 10 plus years of therapy and probably 5 or 6 different therapists has been still got depression huh? Veiled, see you next month. Man I feel totally the opposite. I've gained weight and feel totally anxious and depressed. I think I was before but now feel like definitely I am considering therapy but feel overwhelmed by the different options. Like there are so many different titles and qualifications and methods and the insurance is even more confusing than finding a primary care. Which I also need to do. I'm just a guy writing a comment on the internet, but do it as soon as possible. It's really not that hard once you start setting it up, and it's way easier right now than it might be later. If you'll get confused, tired, resigned during that remember it's mostly caused by what condition you're in and which is the reason you're doing this in the first place. It happens, like breaking a leg or catching a cold, and you need to fight it. The good part is that you can fight it just by meeting with someone who will show you how you fix it. Cognitive behavioral therapy will definitely be a good starting point and might actually be all you need. Don't focus too much on therapists' certifications, hobbies, look etc., just look at their education. If possible find a psychologist, not a therapist, although I know at least two great therapists, It's not very common, at least in my country. Good luck. My employer now knows for sure that working from home is completely doable and really doesn't F up productivity. I've also learned that I like going into the office once or twice a week just to break up the monotony of working from home all the time. I agree with both. I miss the social aspect of the office. Just me at home, so being cooped up so long is getting to me. My last full-time, obligated, long story, job I literally had to sit in my office and twiddle my thumbs for 8 hours and then head home. It was rare that I interacted with anyone in the offices around me. Those kinds of jobs sound great in theory but get old very quickly. I'm working one of them now, had to change jobs when COVID hit. Happy to have a paycheck, but this crap is boring. How do these jobs pop up at all? Like is it just waiting to do stuff for 7.5 hours a day or is it genuinely just sitting around all day and getting paid? I love not having to communicate with anyone face to face because I stutter too much. Hey, everyone's got their pros and cons. For the first whatever months I absolutely loved it, just starting to get old now. I go into the office once a week but no one else is there but me so it's basically the same as being home. 
I have now learned that I don't lack time to do things, just motivation. I have all the time in the world to get in shape and learn something new. A year later and I've made much less progress than I should have given the amount of free time. Hmm. I've lost interest in all my hobbies and gotten fat instead of learning anything new. So it sounds like you're killing it. Depression. You've made progress in depression. Nah man I'm for sure not depressed but I'm going down the same path. I'm loving it. Maybe crap for my health but still. I'm liking my year-long break from existence. How funny is it that so many of us thought we were going to be so productive during one of the most distressing times in human history? I was absolutely on fire during the first month of lockdown slash working from home. I started all these creative projects, went out for a jog on my lunch breaks, and even after work too, and was having blast with all this new time. Then a couple more months went by and I started to feel the opposite. Just roll out of bed, get on work computer, finish up and log off around 5 p.m., cook dinner, get back in bed and Netflix slash Reddit until sleep. I still have no idea WTF happened there. Hey, are you me? This is also my life. I think we expected too much of ourselves. Just because we are home doesn't change the circumstances of stress. It's been a very trying year for people mentally and I can't blame anyone for being like May. What's the effing point? You also don't get to have new experiences and nothing to break the monotony. You can't get out as much and you don't get a choice about it. If you are a hermit by nature, you still have the opportunity to get out if you wanted to. That has been taken away. Spending time with my dog. Dogs are the real winners of the pandemic. I can't believe our dogs all got together and engineered a worldwide pandemic to get what they've always wanted. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.